Aloha, this is uh, Ralph Winnie from Enchanted Lakes. I am here with the esteemed uh, Brian Letterer by phone from Washington, D.C. Brian is a good old local boy, Punahou graduate, worked uh, for Senator Matsunaga, and was in the Carter administration. Brian, how are you doing this this uh, this evening in D.C.? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Well, tell us a little bit I grew, about. I grew up in Pearl. I grew up in Pearl City by the old Pearl City Tavern before the H one. Okay. Yeah. Well, start uh, start by telling us a little bit about where you grew up in Hawaii and how you got to D.C. and your work with Senator Matsunaga and more importantly your work with uh, Jimmy Carter and Rosalind. Yes, I miss her. She just passed. Yes. Um, yes. She was a very special lady, but let's start out with Matsunaga. What happened was he was running for re-election in 1968. And I knew him. I mean, you know, we were local people. I mean, we knew Matsunaga in, in a way and so on. And he have been active politically. Well, I did my senior honors thesis at Harvard on Vietnam, which is how we sort of created the Independent Republic of Vietnam in 1945. And so uh, Matsunaga wanted help on that matter because it was a big issue in the 68 election. Uh, I knew him. And so he asked me to be his daily, he created a position called daily press person. I had worked for the advertiser a couple summers. And so I rode with him in his car in Honolulu and advised him on Vietnam and what happened. And it also handled his press relations. And so we did that and he was wonderful to work with. I mean, very personal and, you know, a veteran and 442 and all that stuff. And so when he won, then I went to work for him for a year. I worked for him as a special assistant. And no, what was that thing that it, like? Fabulous. I mean, he was just, you know, he was a, a local guy and he was serious. The thing I liked about him, he, you know, he, he was a 442, like, you know what? And he was serious about his responsibility. And he and in a way, and Burns were the people who got a statehood in '59 when I was a freshman at Pohl. Ah, just they were so professional, and so he was very professional and very friendly to work for. Took respect to my counsel, but also I knew that he was the member, not me. Right. And so I worked for him for a year. Now. I needed, the reason I didn't stay was I wanted to go to law school. And I had graduated in 60, before I worked for him from the London School of Economics in London, in Southeast Asia, got a master's in international relations in Southeast Asia and China. So that was also helpful. So I could give it him some credibility on Vietnam, which it, it helped him stay focused so he didn't get caught into the controversy in the anti-war movement. Anyway, we had a very good working relationship. It was very professional and very helpful. And then later on, when I wanted to become the People's Council of D.C., he recommended me to Mayor Walter Washington. So I was grateful for that. And that we remain 
you know, so I was active in Washington and he was in Washington. So we remained friends and colleagues all the way through till the end of his life. And how did you get connected with uh, uh, the Carter administration? Well, with the Carter administration, I had worked in 72 with McGovern. I was a surrogate. He was a Democratic nominee in 72. And I was a surrogate for him in New York City. So I represented him at debates. I also ran, was an organizer in the Bronx in an area that was very volatile in 72, had a lot of a co-op city, which was a lot of people of Jewish ancestry that had been moved out of Manhattan up into the Bronx, and they were very antsy about stuff that was going on. So we had to have good relationships with the people there, which I did. And then I lived with a nice family on the uh, Hudson River on the other side of the Bronx and got to know New York City very well. So that was in 72, working for uh, McGovern. Now, I got to know him, but it was a lot of fun. He was very professional. Now, the reason he lost the election, in my professional opinion, is because Nixon opted in to Jim Crow which he is, in other words, he took away the Southern anti-civil rights base that had been in the Democratic Party since 1860. And really since 1872, when the, in order to uh, get the federal troops out of the South, the, uh, Democrats in the South agreed, you know, they made a deal not to deal with, with civil rights and they would vote Democratic. It was pretty unholy. And so that went along for a long time and they always voted for the Democrats. And then at 70, uh, in 1960, Kennedy, that's how he got elected. I was a uh, sophomore in high school at Punao when he got elected in 1960. I graduated in 62. Sure. And I remember the Kennedy Nixon debate. And I, when I listened to Kennedy, I just, I loved, I just really appreciated him. And so he became president. Well, he, um, you know, we had to bay a pig. Right. And I remember my dad co-authored The Ugly American and then had written a sequel to The Ugly American called Sarkhan, which, uh, in 65, which was about being sucked into a war in Asia. And Kennedy read that book and the manuscript before it was published. And he and my dad had a conversation in the Oval Office about the manuscript and Kennedy told my dad that he, my dad, it was special assistance to the commander in chief Pacific. So he had the highest security clearance. So I don't think that Kennedy was talking out of shop. So person who didn't have the security clearance. And so he, um, and he retired as a captain and he would have been an admiral if he wanted to come back to Washington and become the congressional liaison for the Navy, but he didn't, he wanted to be a writer and he had, and stay in Hawaii. He liked surfing. Uh, also, I hope you like surfing. And, right? Oh, I like surfing. He's, he's the one that, uh, got me to learn how to surf. Were you able to teach uh, President Carter or Mrs. Carter how to surf? 
You no, know, they never came to Hawaii. It's their, 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 their were bean farmers in Plains, Georgia. But what Carter did, now this is what I was leading up to, what got me involved with him, was when I worked with McGovern in 72, you know, I really wanted, you know, I mean, we had it, we won work in New York, but Nixon won pretty decisively, as we know, overall. And what happened in 76, I was looking for a candidate. I want you know, to see if we could be Nixon or somehow get the White House. All right. And so while I was doing that, the energy crisis hit. If you recall, the, the, the Arabs did their thing. And so I got asked to come down to Little Rock and represent a community group in 74 and 75, two separate years, in two different rate cases involving Arkansas Power and Light. And I had been a criminal defense lawyer, but as you know, electric utilities, you're litigating engineering. Right. So the good thing about it is at Paho, my best subjects were math and science. Even though, you know, and I thought actually when I went to Harvard College, I went there in sixty three. I took a year off between high school and college and went to Europe. And so I was in Europe in 62, 63 in Germany to improve my German. Okay. I studied four years of German. Punahou is, is a marvelous school. And I had my two German teachers had been simultaneous translators at the Nuremberg dial. I mean, this is quality of Punahou. That's Siegfried Rambler and, was one of them. Siegfried Rambler and Reinhold Kieschel. Okay. And so, um, and in fact, with Rambler was also, we formed uh, the advertiser. This is another thing that was kind of fun. The advertiser had a contest for people who could write the best foreign affairs essay. Uh. And so Rambler was our advisor in 61. And we entered the, there were five of us. And we won the contest. We were, wrote about China, communist China and its drive for world power. So we got a free trip to Washington. And we, we met Matsunaga and in Norway and it was just a super trip, uh, courtesy of the advertiser. That was, uh, I mean, what, what was one of the, what was one of the most meaningful projects that you worked on while you were in the Carter administration? Well, so going back to how I Carter, so I was in Little Rock for two years. And I saw something that I said, you know, if we're going to win the White House in 76, we need to be able to beat George Wallace in the South. Okay. Well, George Wallace, of course, was uh, anti-civil rights, as we well know, you know, and so... Yeah. What I what had happened is the the civil rights the voting rights bill started to grind into effect. So Kennedy, Senator, President Kennedy, and his Attorney General brother Robert Kennedy had gotten it introduced in the Congress when they were in the White House, and gradually, you know, and there was a 
a lot of resistance in the South, but they got it through. And so in 76, for the first time, as a result of the effects of that, African Americans could vote in the South. Yeah. It hadn't happened in a hundred years. Right. And the reason it hadn't happened is because the Southerner wanted to let the Republicans stay in office, but they didn't, they wanted the federal troops out. So they made the deal in 1876, don't enforce the civil rights laws, and we'll let you stay in the White House. That was the deal that was made. So for 100 years, Jim Crow basically was in effect. And then the civil rights laws were passed because of Dr. King and the other activists. And so in 76, I said, you know, th this is a really interesting situation because the only one who really understands that George Wallace can be defeated by a Southerner is Jimmy Carter. He was the governor of Georgia. Okay. Yeah. At the time. And he was a Naval Academy graduate and a nuclear engineer, a very smart guy. And a Christian, born again Christian, yeah. man of great integrity. And so, uh, you know, I had worked in these campaigns, but I said most of the people who are going to run in 76 assume that they can write off the South. But I said if someone can defeat George Wallace in the South, they're going to be president. And I said Jimmy Carter can do it. Because African Americans will vote in the election in the South for the first time since 76, 1876. Most of the people who were running for president had no clue about that. They just assumed. But the only reason I saw it was because I'd spent the two years in Arkansas on the utility cases and I was looking for a way to find a candidate and so I, that's when I met Bill Clinton, too, because he was, you know, from Arkansas. And I really looked at what was going on in the South. Sure. But it also opened a new career for me to become people's counsel because I was very experienced in utility litigation. Yeah. In any event, so I signed up with Carter, right. contrary to most of my political friends. You know, and I ran part of Michigan for him in 76. I was an organizer for him in a surrogate. Did he, he win Michigan? Won in yes, he did. And we won what I was particularly assigned in Flint, Michigan. Okay. And he won the election. You know, and what he did when he got the uh, he was very smart to get the nomination what he did is he got his name on all the southern ballots whereas the other conceded it and he ran north carolina and all of the southern states including texas and he ran the table and suddenly he had he by by doing what he did in the south he he had the nomination locked up. <laughs> they didn't know what hit him. <laughs> you know, when it came to the New York primary. Yeah. But that's Carter. Carter, 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 you know, was a Naval Academy correct? You know, a yeah. Naval officer. Very well prepared. A nuclear engineer. I grew up under a Naval... From a, my dad was a command Naval officer at Naval Academy. So, no, yes. You know, could it, and he was, his great strength was command. Sure. So, for example, when they had the uh, naval invasion of Sicily in 1943, it was a night invasion. They had 50 ships. One of them had its lights on. 
And he was the navigator on the light ship. Because the Navy trusted his command ability. And all the way through his career, the other ships had their lights out. All the way through his career, he had command authority. Because he, he grew up in New York City. He was a street guy, and he knew how to talk to people. Okay. As he said, sniff around. Right. And the reason I never, you know, that they wouldn't let him out of Hawaii, so it became my home, was because the the commander-in-chief Pacific didn't have any confidence in the intelligence from the intelligence sources. And only uh, trusted my dad, who made frequent trips out to Asia, yeah. to talk to people. Plus, he had the local papers flown in. Um, I remember, and he had him translate and read them. So he'd just find out what was going on. And it was better intelligence than the four-star admiral in charge of all the forces got from the CIA. And so what, this conversation with uh, President Kennedy, who read the manuscript of Sarkin, was that he'd been completely hoodwinked by the CIA in the Bay of Pigs. And when he, and he said, I, you're, man, you're right. You know, we shouldn't be in Vietnam. He was, he was going to get out of Vietnam. That's my professional opinion. And I think that's why he was killed, actually, to go into Vietnam. And uh, did... did... Did Carter have, uh, follow a lot of the same principles as Kennedy, would you say? Yes. Okay. Carter was very smart. I mean, when Carter became president in 76, he had a very young administration. His press secretary, Judy Powell, was 32. His appointment secretary was 25. You know... And, he, of course, he had young children. And right. me. And others. And so, and they like to have fun. So that fit in with me. You know, I like to have fun. And so I got them into the Congressional Softball League. Oh, okay. Which, which and you... uh, yeah, and I, I played on the team and I was co-coach. And we, you know, they were young. So, you know, Jody was played on the team, the press secretary and the appointment secretary. I mean, we really hung out together. They were young. And we run the streets together. We had a lot of fun together. Did you invite them to come and visit Hawaii? Oh, yeah. And they also helped me become people's counsel. Okay. Because they called up. Mayor Washington and said he's 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 ono he's okay, do it for us. And People's Council is a position in D.C. that represents all the ratepayers with the utilities. And one of the things I learned from people like Jimmy Carter and George McGovern and my dad was go all in. I mean, if you're going to go to war, so to speak, do it properly. And the, what what I thought, and I had been, I had some roots in Seattle because my stepfather uh, was a tinkerer and he invented the dialysis process, the kidney machine. Ah, okay. And so, and he, you know, he used to fly radio control model airplanes and stuff like that. And so I, I was able to do for law school, studied international relations, which I did, you know, not really law, Chinese law at Harvard Law School and Japanese law at University of Washington. And I, so I really be, got myself you know, up on that stuff. And then 
I had to pass the bar exam, so I took the bar review course, and I did pass it in Hawaii and BC. Wonderful. Well, oh, Brian, we're going to have to end it, unfortunately, on that note. Um, sounds like you've had a very... Yeah, well, that's fine. This is fun. I appreciate it. Yeah. You know, but I'd say, you know, Hawaii is great, okay? I grew up in Hawaii. Honolulu is still my hometown. I'm licensed there. And I recommend all of you who are on listening to this in Hawaii, really enjoy yourself. And I can surf. Well, phenomenal, Brian. Great interview. And we will talk soon. Thank you all for listening.